Good day, everyone. I'm your host, Lee Judge, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Visual IVR Use Cases, Teach Your IVR New Tricks, brought to you by Jakarta. Our presenter today is Chris Dutoy, Director of Product Marketing at Jakarta. Today, we will show several interesting use cases on how to extend an IVR visually, breathing new life into your existing IVR and teaching it new tricks. So let's begin. Chris, the presentation is all yours. Great. Thank you, Lee, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, heartfelt welcome for, for your attendance today. And I uh, just wanted to thank Lee for organizing this and operating the uh, levers behind the curtain, so to speak. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. We have allocated time for Q&A, uh, so go ahead and ask your questions at any time. Uh, even if we do run out of time, we will still answer you by email individually, but we do have time for a Q&A session, uh, which Lee will moderate at the end of this webinar. So just go ahead and ask your questions at any time. Um, and also one last housekeeping note, the attendee window will only show yourself, so you'll only see yourself being listed. Uh, don't worry, you're not the only attendee, it's just for privacy reasons. Uh, we mask out the other names. So with that, let's get started. And uh, just to give you an idea of what you can expect today, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the state of the IVR industry and what visual IVR is and what the visual IVR solution does. Some of you on the call may already be aware of what visual IVR is, but we have a lot of new attendees, and understanding this step uh, is important for understanding the use cases that we're going to explore in the latter part of this webinar. And the idea behind exploring these use cases is to give you a sense of how your IVR can be taught new tricks uh, and used in new places, really, in effect, extending your IVR investment into additional areas in your organization. And I hope you'll find some of these use cases inspiring. Uh, we were quite impressed to see the creative ideas that people have used uh, since we've released this technology and how they've found new ways to, to really extend their IVR offering, and uh, I think you'll find it interesting just as, as we found it interesting. So I thought, what better way at starting a presentation on visual IVR and getting your reaction to this slide? Thank you for calling. Please listen carefully as our menu options have recently changed. For billing inquiries, please press 1. For account changes, please press 2. For cancellations, please press 3. Uh, and my guess is that you don't get a favorable reaction when you hear this kind of slide. It's, we, we as consumers have been inundated with this kind of you know, greeting every time we call a call center. Uh, that we know it well, but it's not our, it's not our favorite uh, sort of method of communication. And it's really no secret. IVRs are not always our preferred method of communication. So what are the warning signs for your IVR? As I like to call it, the canary in the coal mine. How do you know if your IVR is not delivering on the experience your customers are expecting? And here are the common warning signs that we see when we look at IVR implementations. The first one is when your IVR zero out rate is more than 7%. And by zero out, I'm referring to the callers when that IVR greeting hits you, the first thing you reach for is the zero key. You don't even want to listen to the menu options. You just want to speak to somebody and you hit zero. Uh, and that, that, that is termed zero out. Uh, when your IVR zero out is more than 7%, there's cause for concern. And while there's no common industry average that's easily obtained, uh, you know, we have a range all over the place, but generally we see when this exceeds 7%, you're causing more zero outs than really what should be expected. There's always going to be people at zero out no matter what. But when this number starts trending high, you need to, to, to reassess what's going on in your IVR. We've heard stories of zero out rates exceeding 20%, which, which of course is extremely high. The second warning sign for your IVR is when the customers reach an agent, they're already frustrated. And obviously that's not a good way to start a customer interaction. You funnel them through confusing menu options, poor voice recognition, by the time they reach you, they're already upset. So then you start asking yourself if the benefits of the IVR exceed that negative customer experience. The third warning sign for your IVR is when the percentage of call transfers inside your call center is excessive. This is typically indicative of poor menu choices. So the customer ends up in the wrong queue, and as a result, the agent has to transfer them to the right group the moment the call connects. So keep an eye on your internal transfer rate. Um, we've recently uh, worked with a customer who has about a 20% bounce rate uh, or internal transfer rate, and each internal transfer eats up about two minutes of time. So you can imagine a 20% bounce rate 
uh, each each of those taking two minutes time of call, that adds up to a lot of wasted call time. So absolutely, you want to keep an eye out to see what your internal bounce rate is like. Typically, as I said, that is a sign of poor menu choices. The fourth sign, the uh, warning sign for your IVR, is when your website is listed on sites instructing callers how to zero out. And I say that somewhat facetiously, but yes, there really are websites that do nothing more than instruct your customers how to zero out and how to reach a live agent. Uh, obviously, it's not a good sign when your company is listed on that website. And the biggest warning sign for your IBR is when you don't want to call your own call center, and uh, then you really have a problem with your, with your IBR. This one I speak from true experience when I, I had a cable repairman at my house when my cable modem went out. The cable repairman came to my house, diagnosed the fact that my modem was broken and had to give me a replacement modem. Once they give you a replacement modem, they have to provision that modem. And sure enough, that cable repair person actually has to phone the same 1-800 number that you or I would phone. And he had to get funneled through his same IVR, getting confused in, his same, in, in the very same menu choices that we'd get confused in. Um, and, and I think he was more upset than I've ever been calling my cable company, and that, that says a lot. So uh, if you don't want to call your own call center, clearly there's some concern there. But let's be clear. People don't hate IVR self-service. They hate bad self-service. The IVR is not the problem. It serves a very valuable purpose, and it, and it starts off with the best of intentions. The IVR team works hard day and night trying to keep this as an efficient self-service routing uh, and self-service solution solution for your company. Um, so, so we think the IVR is very important, and, and, and it's easy to sort of, uh, you know, quote unquote, make fun of the IVR, and that's not what we're intending to do. We just know that it's not always our preferred communication vehicle because of those challenges I raised earlier. So, so on the contrary, we actually think your IVR can be used even more than it is today, uh, and that's really why we call this webinar Teach Your IVR New Tricks. So it's not that customers hate the IVR, it's bad self-service that they hate. And, and what are the kind of things that we don't like about it? And, and you know, if, if I had to canvas everybody on this call today, I'm sure you would come up with pretty much the same list that we have here. We, we hate to, to listen to long introductory prompts. You know, you cram so much information in that first minute that you're trying to upsell me, tell me about your store locations, your operating hours, you're giving me a whole lot of information, but if I'm calling back for the third time trying to solve my issue, I really want to get to the issue fast. I don't want to listen to the long intro introductory prompt for the third time in a row. So we don't like those long introductory prompts. Another thing we don't like is when the menu options are so long, you can't remember which one you should have chosen. In a generation of Twitter, we consume 140 characters at a time. So by the seventh menu option, I honestly don't remember what the first three were. So please keep your menu tree fairly short and concise. We also don't like it when the menu options are confusing. Should I choose three? No, wait, two. Yes, two. You know, sometimes those menu options are not clear. What, what is the difference between number two, which is account services, and number three, which is account inquiries? And then as a result, I hit the wrong one, and I end up uh, with the wrong agent, and we get back to having an internal bounce as the agent has to refer me to the right agent group. So please make those menu options clear so I know which one to select. We also hate it when there's no clear navigation path. You know, how do I go back? I've gone down five nodes. Let me try the asterisks. Wait, no, that took me back all the way to the beginning. So what am I going to do now? Oh, let me just hit zero. I just want to speak to somebody. I don't want to try and navigate the tree again. So provide a, a clear breadcrumb that allows me to go back very easily up to the right menu node uh, and, and resolve, resume my situation. And then I think the big, biggest pet peeve, at least for me and pretty much everybody I speak to, is why should I enter anything in the IVR when the first thing you're going to do when I connect is you're going to ask me for that information again. We all love that scenario where we've entered a ton of information in the IVR and the very first thing the agent asks is, may I have your account number, please? It just makes us feel that you aren't really listening to us. And mobile doesn't help the problem. When we're working with an IVR on the mobile device, we, we quickly get frustrated. It doesn't lend itself well to the mobile mindset. You know, I have to take the phone away from my ear every time to look at the next menu option to push. Then I have to put it back to my ear to listen to the menu tree again. Very cumbersome. Uh, and as a result, it's easier to just zero out 
than it is to navigate that IVR tree. So really mobile is just exacerbating the existing IVR challenges that we face today. So the goal of a visual IVR solution is to channel more of these calls into an effective self-service offering. Make your IVR a true self-service vehicle for your organization so you can avoid those calls coming into the call center in the first place and really start leveraging a, a, you know, your IVR investment even further. But for those calls that do come into the call center, let's know a, more about them so we don't ask them for a, them, their account number again. And let's get a sense of what they've been struggling with in the IVR so that we can resolve the call quicker. And ultimately, let's just decrease the amount of zero outs. Let's give the IVR a fighting chance at resolving the issue versus people just reaching out for that zero out button. And this is the solution that we call visual IVR, and the industry is really referring to this as visual IVR. A picture is worth a thousand words yet. This is to provide an easy to use visual interface of your existing IVR, providing that on both mobile and websites. So you're taking your IVR, but you're providing a visual representation of that IVR on mobile devices and websites. So as a user, I can click or touch my way through your IVR system versus listening to all the menu options. Obviously, I can scan the screen very quickly, I can click the menu option, and I can go back as necessary to find the right menu option. And I can visually scan to see which menu tree is most appropriate for me. It's a far easier user experience to touch my way through your IVR than to listen through your IVR. Uh, and this integrates to your website too. You know, if you think many of your customers are going to use the contact link on your website, so Visual IVR can actually be embedded on your website. So what you're in effect doing is taking your IVR solution, extending it visually onto your website as well. And think for a second, how are your users contacting you? Many of them are going to Google you for your phone number, and they're going to reach your website, and they're going to reach for that contact button to look for your phone number. Or some of them might already be in your self-service website, and they're going to hit the, you know, I need to speak to somebody, or the contact button. So many of your users are actually going to come in from your website. So you can embed Visual IVR right there at that point of making that contact. So as they hit that contact button, instead of displaying a list of phone numbers, you start presenting the Visual IVR tree right there, and they can start clicking their way through that IVR system. So you can start your call routing and your self-service capabilities right there on your website, again, just reusing the IVR that you have today. And once you've gone visual, you get the IVR extensions that you can do now that you're on a visual channel that you couldn't really easily do on a voice channel or an, or an audio channel. For example, supporting alphanumeric data, trying to enter alphanumeric on a touchtone keypad, very problematic. Uh, so by now, with the visual channel and supporting this you know, additional extension such as alphanumeric data, you open up a world of new possibilities. And that's what you're going to see a little bit later on in this webinar, is, is how some of our customers have really pushed their IVR to, 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 to really new limits by, by supporting some of these additional capabilities. Uh, and of course, once you're visual, you have the no repeating of information. Because what happens is when that call comes into the agent desktop, we provide what we call a rich screen pop, so you can see exactly what the customer was doing in their visual IVR session up to the point of reaching the agent. So here I can see the person selected order new service. They don't currently have service with us. I have their zip code, and I have the street address. I don't have to ask for that information again. So for those of you in the customer care business, you understand how every second saved in a call certainly adds up to a lot of money. So we want to provide that rich screen pop so that we don't ask for the repeating of information and don't ask for the account number again. So ultimately, you know, Visual IVR delivers a better experience. I can scan my smartphone screen far quicker than I can listen to a list of instructions. Um, there's going to be a lower number of zero outs because people will actually use it. It's very much the mobile mindset. It's, it's what we expect in our customer interactions today uh, and just ultimately delivers a, a much better experience. Before we get on to the use cases, there's obviously some questions out there on, on how does this actually work. It sounds good. Take my IVR and present it visually. So I want you to focus here just on the left-hand side of the diagram for, for a second, the orange part. 
Um, IVRs are typically running something called VXML or Voice XML. This is the Voice XML that is driven as the audio prompts that you hear on your phone. Push one for account services, two for billing, etc. Those audio that the, it, it's written in something we call VXML or Voice XML, uh, and then you can write to an agent. So the way Visual IVR works is to take those very same VXML applications and dynamically, at runtime, render them visually. So you are not creating a new set of customer interactions. Uh, you, you're, not, you're not replacing your IVR. You're taking your IVR and you're reusing the very same scripts in your IVR today and just dynamically presenting them visually on a mobile device and then letting the customer have the same option of connecting to a call center. So the key point or the key takeaway item here is it's reusing your IVR to provide a visual channel into that IVR as well. We do not propose replacing or rewriting those IVR scripts. So with that very quick introduction to visual IVR and hopefully you're getting an understanding of what we mean by visual IVR, I'd like to explore a couple of use cases uh, that, that people have been using Visual IV, IVR for. And really, in the short time since releasing this product, we've seen some really exciting uses for this technology. And, and I wanted to share some of them with you today. Um, some of the ones you will see here uh, have not only done a visual mapping of the IVR, but they've actually extended the flows to provide even more benefits to their customers. And, and, and while many do extend the solution beyond a pure visual IVR, um, we hope this gives you some useful insight and, and give you ideas as to what you can accomplish with your IVR and taking your IVR visually. Um, again, at the most you know, basic level, you can just replicate your IVR visually, uh, but I hope some of these use cases will give you interesting ideas of how you might extend your IVR even further in your organization. The first use case I'd like to look at comes with a rather provocative title, uh, called the Kidnapping Express, and, and the story comes from a customer in South America. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a situation where certain regions in Latin America are facing huge security concerns as it relates to individual safety, um, quite often for tourists um, and, and even locals. Hailing a cab uh, or, a, or a taxi can actually be a hit or miss affair. Um, what happens is you order a taxi, and when a car shows up, you hope that it's the car that you ordered. Um, but what happens is that the car stops, you get in the car, and lo and behold, the doors lock, and it turns out not to be the authorized driver. It wasn't the cab that you ordered. Um, and the cab driver is then driving you from ATM to ATM, where you are forced at gunpoint to withdraw cash until you reach your daily limit. Um, you then dropped off uh, in a park somewhere remote, and sometimes you're found safe uh, if you're lucky. Uh, other times you're found with a hole in your head, and this 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 whole uh, cottage industry, if you was, is known as the kidnapping express. Obviously, a, a very unfortunate circumstance uh, and and very dangerous. So the solution to this is a well-known taxi company utilizing their IVR and extending it visually to the smartphone. So first, it makes it easier for people to order the taxi because you can just pull out your phone and start the menu navigation there without listening to the audio prompts. But actually, they didn't stop there. They realized once they went visual, they could do some interesting things by leveraging capabilities of the device. So what they've done is they've layered in the additional capability to take photos of both the driver and the passenger and exchange it ahead of time. So now there's a measure of safety there when the two recognize each other because this, the, the, the danger to the passenger is sometimes is flipped in reverse to the driver as well, uh, where people are hitting up the taxi drivers for, for cash because they often drive around with a lot of cash. So they're leveraging the capability of the device to exchange photographs uh, and that, that adds that level of safety that they were looking for. So you can see here how interesting this was to take what is essentially an IVR, give you the visual option of that to make it easier to order a taxi, and then adding some device capabilities uh, to improve that whole experience. Uh, and again, a great example of how the IVR system has now just entrenched itself even further in the organization and is being used more. Very, very interesting scenario. 
The next use case I'd like to look at is the on-the-spot troubleshooting. Very fortunately, a lot less violent than the Kidnapping Express. Uh, and this one relates to providing troubleshooting services for remote field staff. Uh, this is a, a company that really re is, is a provider of communication equipment. Um, they install and service all forms of communication equipment at different organizations. This could include uh, just standard communication equipment, but also video surveillance equipment, security systems, all those kind of systems. They rely heavily on third-party contracting resources, um, and they are not always trained in the latest company equipment. When you're hiring in a lot of third-party contractors, it's impossible to keep them fully trained on your product offering. And these are complicated products. It's, it's not very simple you know, products. So the contractors go on-site to the customer premises, and they're faced with challenging troubleshooting issues necessitating calls back to the company's call center. So, I, you know, basically I'm sending out a field service technician. They're out on site. They're not fully trained because of the complexity of the equipment. They don't know how to troubleshoot the issue they're facing, so they end up calling back to my call center to get troubleshooting advice. So, in effect, you've tied up two resources. You have the on-site technician and you have the call center. So, you've tied up two resources to fix the same issue. So what this company decided to do was to get rid of these lengthy diagnostic call flows, and instead, they enhanced their IVR trees to provide sophisticated troubleshooting. So now you can really be prompted through the entire IVR. So if you think of it, audio first would be a little bit cumbersome, but from an audio perspective, you know, it could be, is the modem light blinking? Push one for yes, two for no, et cetera. So you can walk them through an entire troubleshooting tree little cumbersome from an audio perspective, but once you make this a visual channel, it becomes very, very easy to use. So now your field technicians are out in the field with their mobile device, and they can very simply walk through the troubleshooting tree. Is the modem light blinking, yes or no? If they click yes, is the modem connected directly to the computer or via a router, etc. So you walk them through the troubleshooting tree to make sure that they resolve those questions quickly and fast something that would be very, very difficult to do in a pure audio IVR, but suddenly makes a lot of sense when you go in a visual channel. So they've really used visual IVR to extend those flows to the mobile device so that the contractors can now go on site and resolve the issues without placing a call to the call center. Clearly a, a good use case for that kind of technology where you can actually just see how the audio representation would not be as good as the visual representation. As, as a result, that IVR is now further entrenched in the organization as a very effective self-service offering uh, and, and so, you know, saving a lot of calls coming into the call center. The next use case I'd like to look at is, is, is something I call it, it cost me what? This is, a, this is something we've all faced. Uh, this is related to a particular cellular company that, you know, it's an issue that many of us have experienced when we open our cellular phone bill at the end of the, at the, end of the month, especially if you've been traveling, um, international roaming. If anybody's been traveling with their cell phone, they've probably been hit with international roaming charges uh, and, and sort of had a heart attack when they opened their phone bill. Um, so this is a prospect that is a large national cellular provider with millions of subscribers. Uh, and they have about, every month, they have over 600,000 subscribers who are traveling internationally per month. Um, and those people, like you and I, are hit with the data roaming charges. Um, and, and they are advised to change the plan before they go or, or while they're traveling. You know, I've, you, you've probably seen it, you land in, in a different jurisdiction, you get a text message that says, you know, please call us um, and we'll give you a different international uh, plan. So it's all well and good, but you know, as much as we pay for this, the cellular company is not actually making that much money. Um, most of that is eaten, eaten up by the, the roaming agreements that they have in place with the, the cellular providers in other countries. Um, and more so, they're eating up a lot of that supposed profit in the subsequent calls to the call center when you and I phone fairly irate, uh, demanding a reduction uh, or just really eating up a lot of agent time as you try and question why my, my cell phone bill is so high. So it's not actually that lucrative an industry. Um, they don't specifically want to hit you with those data roaming charges. So this specific company is being highly proactive um, and hopefully setting, setting the lead in the industry. 
Um, by what you want to do is proactively send you a text message while you're in, in the border area or in the international terminal uh, of an airport because they've got a strong likelihood that you're probably about to travel or go over the border. Uh, and, and what that text message will have is a link to the visual IVR solution, which will allow you to select, compare, and purchase an international roaming package. So as I'm in the international terminal, I'll get this text link, and I can now you know, sort of uh, choose to, to buy an international roaming package before I even leave. Um, so obviously, they're trying to, to, to catch the issue up front and avoid those calls coming into the call center. This is a great example of, of a visual IVR solution because we can send you a, a link to your device which you can click and that link invokes the visual IVR session. You don't actually have to place a call to the call center to deal with the audio IVR. You can just directly go into a, you know, a, 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 a visual session of that IVR. So it's, it's a very good visual IVR use case. Um, and even better, if you happen not to have clicked the link while at the airport and you, you actually do travel and you realize that you want to go on the international plan, you can use Visual IVR while roaming. You know, if you're sitting at the local coffee shop with a Wi-Fi connection, Visual IVR is not a telephony charge, it's a data plan. So if you're on a Wi-Fi connection, that means you can access that Visual IVR session um, at no additional cost and then choose to go onto the, into, you know, onto the international roaming plan through that visual session. Again, you're not placing that costly international voice call because it is now a visual data session uh, and provided you can get some level of, of, of internet connection, you're all set. So also something I think that's just interesting to think how this is an IVR that's now being extended out and something that would be problematic to do in an audio IVR because the very thing you're trying to do is avoid the international call uh, and this is where the visual channel now gives you a, a, a great use case for extending that, that IVR. Don't stay thirsty. So it's concluding with our final use case for today. Uh, we're moving that uh, onto a, a beverage supplier. Uh, and this is a, a, a company that supplies beverages to the restaurant and fast food industry. Uh, very large company, they receive orders from restaurants for resupply. So it, the onus is on the restaurant to order new stock when they see their reserves running low. So whatever point of sale system and inventory system they use, the onus is still on the restaurant to actually order the beverages as they're running low. They do have an IVR in place today, which do allow people to order, but the adoption of the IVR is remarkably low, and it's probably for the reasons we explored in the earlier part of this uh, webinar, where we, we don't really like using the IVR, and, and it's tough to order different groups. You know, I want to order, you know, 10 cases of bottle X and 20 cases of bottle Y. When you start getting to this multi-part order, it becomes very difficult on an audio session. You effectively have a shopping cart that you're trying to replicate through an audio session. Uh, very, very difficult and not very easy to use. So what happens is that the orders are often just not placed, um, resulting in non-delivery, and as a result, calls to the call center saying, hey, I didn't get anything, and this is an emergency now, and you know, I need to expedite delivery of, of 20 cases of bottle X. So um, it, it's a problem. You know, Obviously, it's a problem for the restaurants when they don't get the supply, but it's a problem for the bottling company too, because now they're always dealing with these last-minute emergencies um, of trying to reroute deliveries to, to satisfy the urgent out-of-stock restaurant situation. So um, they, they tried very hard with that IVR system, but as I mentioned, it's just very difficult to, to recreate that shopping cart experience on an audio tree. So this was a very good use case for going with the visual IVR solution as well, because what they did is to really just replicate that entire IVR ordering process and extend it visually to the visual channel. Um, uh, and what, what happens now is that restaurants and kiosks can conveniently reorder directly from their smartphone so, or the website. So I'm on my website or my smartphone. I can now touch my way through your IVR, and I can very easily order my 20 crates of bottle X, uh, order another item, order 20 you know, crates of bottle Y, and then finally you know, hit the button for con confirmation, uh, get a confirmation number, and I'm all set. So, Again, trying to take that complicated audio experience 
and getting that onto the visual channel, a very, very good example of taking your IVR and leveraging it visually as well. Um, and, and as a result, uh, you, you hope to really get increased adoption uh, resulting in more frequent order placement and not relying on that last minute uh, you know, frantic delivery. So I, I certainly hope those use cases have made you think a little bit of how your IVR can actually be extended now and, and, and really improved upon. We, we're very excited about this concept of visual IVR because so often technology, you're choosing it either based on benefits for your customer or benefits for your business. Uh, and really this one is a case where it benefits both. Uh, and that's really a win-win situation. The benefits for your customers are fairly clear. The easy visual navigation, quick access, not repeating of information by giving that rich screen pop to your agents, far less customer frustration, and ultimately better customer service, reduced hold times, reduced call times, uh, just something that we're more, more uh, you know, uh, likely to use as a customer. Um, and because of that, that translates into benefits for your business. At the end of the day, it's either uh, you know, top line revenue or bottom line costs. So you're going to dramatically reduce your costs. If if you can avoid calls coming in due to less zero outs, that's a win. If you can increase your self service capabilities, um, thereby deflecting calls to your call center, you know that's a win. You're going to save money, um, and you will you'll have lower IVR and telephony charges because people are on a data plan. They they are not they're not consuming precious 1-800 or toll-free numbers or, or minutes. Uh, so you're going to have lower IVR and telephony charges as well. So definitely reduced costs. Um, reduced call times, uh, you know, that, that belies, of course, the fact that you can save dramatic uh, amount of money by reducing your call times. Uh, if you have that rich screen pop, so you're not asking for the account number again, uh, and better routing, so you, know, you have less zero outs, you get to the right agent in the right queue at the right time, and you, you don't have that, that internal bounce that eats up two minutes of call time. Um, and then ultimately, it's an easy implementation. Um, what I've tried to stress throughout this presentation, both in the, in, the, in the what is visual IVR and the use cases, is understanding that this is reusing your existing IVR scripts. Yes, you can extend those IVR scripts if you wish to, but we almost recommend a piecemeal approach. First, replicate your IVR visually just by reusing your IVR that you have in place today. If you see the adoption taking place and you start getting ideas, you can then start extending out and building additional self-service scripts that you couldn't do in your IVR, much like some of those use cases showed you. But you don't have to go there from day one. You can start off by reusing your existing IVR, get the visual channel going, and then start uh, adding additional self-service functionalities as and when it makes sense. So uh, really recommend a, a sort of a piecemeal incremental approach to this. Uh, you'll have a far higher success rate and, and increased adoption. So as promised, we said we would keep this webinar to uh, just under 45 minutes. Um, I, I hope that was informative to you. I know we have questions coming in. We wanted to leave time for some questions. So um, I'll be turning it over to Lee to moderate those questions. Please go ahead, and if you have any questions, type them in. Um, and we'll also respond via email for any of those that we might not get to uh, on this call today. So Lee, let me hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Chris, for your valuable insights on visual IVR use cases. Uh, due to the high participation in the webinar, we will answer any question or as many questions as we can uh, from the Q&A window, and the remaining questions will be responded to individually uh, via email or phone call after the event. Uh, we will now answer some questions that have already been added to the Q&A window. Uh, the first question we have here, uh, Chris, is um, they ask, for those use cases you showed, did the IVR already support these call flows? Uh, some of these did not look like regular IVR flows. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good observation. It was a mix of use cases. You know, the, for example, um, just the order entry is replicating the IVR one-for-one uh, -one visually. Some of those, like the taxi cab application, is extending the IVR by, by leveraging the device capability so you can take photographs, et cetera. So it really is a mix, um, and, and it's really up to you. Uh, you know, uh, we often recommend start off with a one-for-one -one visual IVR mapping um, and then start adding additional self-service flows um, as you move along. Okay, thank you. Um, another question in the, the Q&A window says, um, I am, am I correct in assuming that in order to implement this, I would need an existing mobile app? Um, yes and no. So we, we want to make Visual IVR as accessible to your customers. Um, 
one of the most common ways of actually accessing this is through your website or mobile website. Um, so you do not need a native mobile app. You can leverage your existing website or mobile website. However, we do provide an SDK, so if you have an existing mobile app, you can extend your mobile app to add the visual IVR capabilities to it. So fairly common use case as well. So, so really you can choose whether you want to make this available through web, mobile web, or native. Okay. We have a lot of questions coming into the chat window, so please be sure to add your questions to the Q&A window so that Chris can see them as well um, as we go through these questions. So please um, add your questions to the Q&A window. Um, so the next question coming in is, what are the typical infrastructure needs? It's, uh, Visual IVR itself runs on uh, really a J2EE server. Um, we are leveraging your existing infrastructure, so we want to leverage your existing IVR system, um, and we are going to leverage your existing CTI and core routing infrastructure, so we're not trying to come in and, and uplift everything in, in your organization. We will work side by side with your IVR and your, your existing call center infrastructure. Uh, Visual IVR itself, however, just needs a server, which you may need to scale depending on your call volume. Okay, let's see. Um, we have questions uh, in the chat window as well, but let's see. Um, let's see, is there a potential to use Visual IVR for more complex use uh, the examples they're asking about says ordering or changing product offerings, such as buying a new cell phone, bundling products, obtaining discounts. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, you know, we, we typically see people starting off with just replicating your IVR experience visually, just because that's the easiest thing to do. Um, we absolutely provide uh, a sort of graphical interaction builder, if you will, that allows you to create new, more complex use cases. Um, so you can absolutely extend out the capabilities of your IVR once you're on the visual channel. And yes, you know, you can absolutely build out more complex use cases, uh, but at that time, you know, you are building new use cases. You're sort of breaking away a little bit from your pure IVR solution, uh, but absolutely that's possible. Okay, I've seen this question a couple of times to ask, are there any special requirements for the smartphone? Uh, it depends how you're presenting that to your customers. If you are presenting it on a on mobile web, um, the only requirement is HTML5 capability, which every smartphone today does support. Um, so, so we can fully, you know, expose Visual IVR as, as HTML5 on your smartphone. Um, and again, if you want to build it in natively into your app, you can do that as as well. Okay. Um, what are the backend TTI integration uh, that are supported? Uh, most of the major market-leading uh, CTI systems, so um, we, we generally have you covered. Um, it's one of those that I would certainly ask if you just uh, reach out to us privately via email with the specifics of your environment, and then we'll, we'll let you know which versions and so forth we support. But, but generally, we support most of the major ones um, and even some proprietary ones as well. Okay. Um, here's a good question. They said, how much time does it typically take to implement a – Plain uh, visual IVR. Um, it's uh, you know I hate to answer a question with it depends, but um, it's what we like to say. We talk about weeks, not years. Um, we want to you know put in our environment, read your existing IVR scripts, um, and, and just create the appropriate plugins so that you can get visually represented. So the idea is a very very quick implementation cycle, um, which also includes making your team. Uh, sort of self-sufficient that if they want to extend the flows and add new self-service capabilities that they're, they're able to do that on their own as well without needing to come to us as well. So um, very short implementation cycles for this. Okay. Um, the next question, Chris, says, can the existing voice IVR be transformed to visual IVR um, as an example of a form of website without incurring extra costs for its, cost for its uh, implementation? I guess you're asking, you know, how easy is it to transform an existing IVR mm -hmm. to visual. Okay. Yeah. And and, um, and if we if we if we misunderstood your question, just please please email us. Um, the the idea is to take your voice IVR and and translate it to visual IVR with you know without any real work on your part. Um, and the way we do that is by by leveraging the metadata that your IVR generates. Most of the time, that is voice XML, um, but we are able to work with other forms of metadata as well. So provided your IVR. Um, has some form of metadata, then we can give you the visual representation of that as well. Okay, let's see what the next 
question here is. We have so many coming in. Once, again, a reminder, uh, the ones we can't get to, we will respond to you via email uh, following the, the event. Uh, so the next question is, um, as Chris said, Visual IVR takes VXML and converts it into a Visual IVR. Is it having its own development IDE? Um, it's a, it's a two-part thing. So at its most basic level, we're just going to take your VXML and give you the visual representation of it dynamically at runtime. Um, depending on your IVR provider, for example, uh, with Avaya, we have extensions to the Avaya Dialog Designer to make it easier to extend those flows in that environment. Um, and then finally, if you get to the point where you now want to build completely new self-service flows, then yes, we do have a visual designer, uh, interaction designer, which allows you to build completely new flows purely for the visual channel. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what they're asking this question. They ask, is visual IVR present output on the screen when prompting? I guess they mean, are they seeing the same commands from the visual IVR on the screen prompt? Okay, yeah. Um, so we, we do give you the option of doing, um, you know, a, a mapping table because when the IVR says push one for billing, you don't want it really to say one for billing on, on your phone. You want it to say billing. So we do give you the option of creating a mapping table, um, but that's really just a one-time exercise. Once you've created the mapping table, all the logic and flow is, is reused out of your IVR system itself. Um, okay, another question is what is the license model for visual IVR? Uh, it's, it, we, we try to be flexible to fit in with your environment, so we give you either the more regular standard software model where it's a perpetual license, um, or if you're looking at, you know, from an IVR budget perspective, you can price this, uh, we price this as well, uh, or license it, much like IVRs can be licensed either by transaction or by a concurrent port or concurrent session. So a uh, couple of different licensing models that would, you know, really be flexible to your environment. Okay. Um, let's see another question here. Uh, we may have answered this, Chris. The question says, we use pre-recorded voice prompts in our IVR tree. What about those? Yeah, it's not uncom uncommon to see this. Um, and, you know, for for those on the call um, who, who are not aware of this, some IVRs will not sort of describe the text to the user. They'll just reference a pre-recorded audio file where the audio file, you know, is a voice that says, push one for billing services, et cetera. So in those cases, you, you do have to use the mapping table that I referred to where we go through just as a one-time exercise to convert those audio prompts to textual prompts for the visual IVR. But again, you only have to do that once, and then your logic and everything is preserved as you, as you change and maintain your flows in the IVR. Okay. Um, so we have one, la one last question here, and um, afterwards, like I said, we'll respond to you via email for those questions we weren't able to get to during the event. We want to uh, allow you to get back to your business day. Uh, the last question, Chris, says, does this work on English only, or what about multiple languages? Uh, no, it's uh, absolutely work with multiple languages. Um, you know, at, at our level, we don't really concern ourselves with the actual underlying language. And, and what I mean by that is we're not trying to pass the audio prompts. So, so whatever your current VXML is, is using is what we will use. So you can not only support other languages, but you can support multiple languages within one session as well. Okay. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, this concludes our webinar today on visual IVR use cases. Uh, thanks again to Chris Dutoy, our Director of Product Marketing. If there are any questions that we were unable to answer during today's session, we will respond directly to you after the event. We hope that you have gained valuable insight into, agent, into uh, visual IVR and how you can easily utilize it to enhance your organization's customer service. A replay of the event will be available very soon on jakarta.com. And if you'd like a copy of the slide decks today, please contact me directly at ljudge, that's L-J-U-D-G-E, at jakarta.com. Thank you for attending today. Please visit us again at jakarta.com and have a wonderful day.